Boy, can I help you? Listen up. I'm bringing you the best content to ever exist in the door-to-door -door industry from sales, leadership, recruiting, and personal development. Well, why would I need that? Because never before have we been able to collaborate with the top experts in their industries, sharing their secrets and techniques on what makes them the best. Wait, who, who are you? I'm your host, Sam Taggart, creator of the DDD Experts and DDD Con. Is there a place we can sit down? Well, come on in. Vanilla is the fastest way to increase your Google and Facebook reviews through text. With a 98% open rate, Vanilla Reviews is the simplest, cheapest way to interact and engage with customers. Visit us at vanillagood.com for more information. Hey everybody, this is Sam Tagger with the D2D Podcast, and we are here live all over the country with five of the industry experts that are going to be coming at you March 28th through the 31st in Las Vegas where we've hand-selected the best of the best, Jonah Cafferty on general sales techniques, Michael O'Donnell on solar, Adam Webb in security, Ian Wen in satellite mobility, and Mitch Matthews in pest control. And I have them here live on a podcast all together to give you a teaser of what we're about to go do at the end of March in the sales summit. To, this is the ultimate boot camp sales training. What we're going to talk about on this podcast is going to be what is the difference between the top 1%? What has got these guys over the years to where they're at today? And how do we help you get there as well? Because at the end of the day, we realize people can be trained. People can be different than where their current results are. It's about what they do different today moving forward that gets them there. And so we've created an opportunity and we've created a summit and training in this podcast to really help get you guys there. So we're about to dive in. Welcome to the podcast, people. Ian, Mitch, Jonah, Mark, Adam, we got a lot of people on here. We ready to dive in? Let's go, buddy. All right. So this is going to be interesting. As you're watching this on Facebook Live, feel free to answer, uh, put questions, comments, things like that. We'd love to hear your guys' take. This is a cool opportunity to pick the best. Okay, so I am going to start this off and direct the questions. As people kind of comment on here, I'd love for you guys to ask the questions. But I put on Instagram, I had one question, and, and I'm going to start with this one. Is how do you define success? And I'm going to start with Adam Webb. How do you define success? This is a common one that a lot of people ask. But Adam, let's start this off with you. Okay, thanks, Sam. Let me pull up my video here for you. Um, so for me, we lost you, Adam. We lost you. <laughs> so <laughs> where'd it go? Nope. Okay, we're coming back to Adam, and we still don't hear you. I don't know why you disappeared. Maybe you got to get off Facebook. He's driving. It's probably uh, okay, how, about, how about now? Can you hear now me? We can hear now you. we can hear you. Okay, so, weird. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm in my car right now out in Austin, so my reception might not be the best. But what I was saying was a lot of people stick they define success by a specific number, a dollar amount or a sales goal. But for me, door to door, it's it's I don't see it as a job. I see it as a gym for my character. The purpose of, of door to door sales is to build me up as a person and to strengthen me. And so I define success as maximizing your human potential, whatever that is. And for me, the only way I know how to do that is to push myself to my absolute limit every single time I'm on the door. So honestly, even if I go out and I fall short of my goal, but I, I reach my limit and I push past them, that was success for me because I know if I consistently do that over and over and over again, push myself to and then past my limit, I will always achieve success in the long run. So that would be my recommendation is um, focus on using door to door to push your limits and basically become an endurance athlete in our industry. You'll become the best person you can be and you'll, you'll achieve success. I promise you. Love that. Love that. Jonah, I want to hear your definition of success. You know, you have a little bit of different background um, and you, you could probably define success in a different way. What would, how would you define success? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, success has really come through patience and persistence um, and really having a focus on the long-term goal. A lot of the times we were so focused on like, okay, what can I do today? 
but I think for me, success is really built over a longer term. And so being able to sit in the driver's seat and understand that you're not always going to be going the, the right direction every time, or you have to make bob and weaves and move around and whatnot, but you keep focused on the big picture. For me, I think that's what's really been the definition of success is focusing on that big picture, staying consistent with it, and being able to come back to that vision whenever things start to go off. I love that. I love that. So well, I want to I want to direct this one to Mitch because Mitch, you had high level success. This was your very first year door to door sales, right? Right. You're, you're a lot of us are really tenure in this, um, especially Michael. Uh, he's he's twenty year in this. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Michael's a lifer. Well, he's a lifer, right? So, Mitch, this is your first year in door to door. And you're now obviously doing this summit and in your first year earned a golden door award selling a thousand pest control. Um, what, what would you say, how would you answer that question? And you, you know, you've, you've done a lot of other things. You come from like NFL and college football and you've, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm curious your perspective of that. Yeah. You know, for me, when I realized uh, how to maximize my potential, um, and, I'll, and I'll put it like this. I learned a lesson when I was in high school playing football. Um, at the time, I was the number one player in the state in terms of being the best wide receiver. And I think my coach could tell that, I'd, that I thought I had arrived. But one lesson he taught me was never be a big fish in a small pond, right? If you're in your own company and you're the best guy there, are you, does that mean you're the best guy everywhere else? Does that mean you're the, you're the best version of yourself? A lot of times when people get so competitive and they're the best at their own company, they think that they've arrived and they've maximized their potential. And so for me, uh, I never feel like I'm successful until I know in my own brain that I've maximized my own potential, not the credibility given by other companies or other people, right? So I knew that for me to maximize my potential, I knew that I could do what I did this year and sell a thousand pest control accounts under five months. I knew I could do that. But to be the number one rookie ever, I would have only needed to do 600 accounts, right? Um, and so, or, you know, that's rookie. So but I knew that wasn't maximizing my potential. You know, so if I went off of other people's thoughts of me, if I went off of being the best near me, then it wouldn't have maximized my potential. But I knew I could have done more. So for me, success is maximizing my potential, not my talents compared to those around me. Yeah, no, yesterday I was with a solar company in San Diego, and there's about five reps in the room I'm training. And, you know, I was like, if you guys just keep comparing yourselves off of each other, you're going to live a very, very slow solar game life. In your backyard, you had a guy do 54 and a quarter down the street just to put a new bar. Go compete with that. Go play with that. Even though he's not in your company, just knowing he exists, go play in that, in that game. You don't have to be in their pond necessarily, but know that that's a pond you want to play with. Right. You know? And I think that a lot of people, they, they feel so comfortable and they feel good about themselves being that big fish in the small pond in reality, that's never going to push us to go anywhere. And, and, and that's how I actually, you know, in, when I had 400 or whatever, it was the year that, that off season, I was getting recruited by Adam Chance, you know, and literally I'm like, I'm like, Oh, that guy can do freaking 12 every day. I could at least do three or four or five. You know what I mean? Like it just, it just put me, I didn't work for him or whatever, but I just knew he existed and that motivated me to play in a bigger pond. So I love that. I love that answer. Okay, let's keep moving. So what, what makes a top 1%? Like, Ian, Ian let's, let's, I want to ask you this question. What makes somebody a top 1%er? Like, what's the difference between the highest performing people and the lowest performing people? You've had the ability to train a lot of people. You've had the ability to work with a lot of individuals and see guys go from low to high. What have you seen that's been that differentiating factor? Dude, I, I think one word actually describes that, that percentage perfectly, and it's the word just hunger. Right? They're just hungry. Like, every part of them wants to be the best. Every part of them wants to get better. Every part of them wants to dive into the training stuff, dive into the company, dive into the culture. And then they just work their balls off, like every single day, they're lady balls, every single day, right? Like, it's just that, that, that attitude of being just hungry for everything, not making excuses and just doing it. Um, 
And, and I, from a, from like a skills standpoint, you know, cause the hard work is a given every, everybody knows that the top is always the one that works the hardest, but from a skill standpoint, it's, it's the rep that's teachable. It's a rep that is willing to learn and adapt and, and take those things that they see as being better than what they're currently doing and implement them into their own system and make it even better. Right. It's the ones that don't want to recreate the wheel. They're just making it even better and more efficient. Um, and I think if you take someone that has that mindset for skills and the mindset of just hard work and hunger, that's your beast. Like that's, that's what, that's, that's it. That's your one percenter. I love that. So I think here's, here's the issue is it's, it's how do you, you know, as a top 1% guy, new guy, Michael, you probably made more than all of us because of how you sold and you have four golden door awards sitting behind you and only it's been two years. So <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Right. But, but here's the question. How do you stay hungry, Michael? Like what Ian's saying, how do you stay hungry and stay motivated, even though you're slinging it, even though you're making so much money, how do you, how do you do it? How do you, how do you, like what keeps you going? Because I think there, there's a differentiator there, right? What's the difference between the guy that's cranking versus the guy that just gets what he needs, right? And yeah. yeah. Well, Sam, I think there's two things. Uh, you know, Napoleon Hill says, what the human mind can conceive, the, the human mind can achieve. Uh, I think for a lot of people, they are very, very successful, but they're successful at what they can conceive. And there's a whole nother level of trying to see what real success looks like. I was very successful for 25 years making a multiple six-year income. I couldn't see and believe that I could do a multiple of that. So there's a breakout process where, like you said, find the guy that you want to compete with. He's not the guy in the next cubicle over or the guy next to you in the training class, he's the guy that's doing the most in that industry or in your, you know, state or whatever. You've got to have some, and then you have to really be able to see that goal and see that you're able to, uh, to achieve that. That's not done automatically. You have to learn how to do that. So you've got to put yourself in a place with people who've been doing it before and learn from them. How did they wrap their mind around performing at a different level? One that you probably can't conceive right now. And then the second part is once you've got that uh, belief and you're going to do it uh, and you want to do it, how do you overcome the negative forces, the negative feelings, the negative thoughts, the negative people that are around you? How do you overcome those thoughts? How do you hack your way uh, out of not being taken down by the things that take down all the other guys that are in your industry that are not performing? Because everybody's hungry. Everybody wants to be super successful. What's dragging them down? You've got to learn how to identify what those are, overcome that, and find the hacks that are going to bring you past that so you're actually in the solution instead of the problem. I love that. No, and, and, and I think there's a common thread here. It's what Adam said at the very beginning. I don't look at this as a job. I look at this as my gym. I look at this as something that I'm going to compete for. I'm going to, I'm going to, to show up and play every day. Um, Here's an interesting question, though, and, and a real question. Um, you, you know, you're saying who are you going to compete with? What happens when you're 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 in your even own competing outlier standpoint? You know, what I mean, most people are competing to get a golden door. You know, you you didn't stop at one; you got two. You know, two and a half. <laughs> like, like, who are you competing with? What, like, so what? And that and that's the thing. So you've you've got to be uh, competing with a goal. You've got to be competing with a belief. Not competing, but you've got to be seeing yourself achieving something that's real to you. It has to become real, and then you have to see it, and then you have to figure out, you know, what do I need to do to accomplish that? So I'm at 25% of goal. You know, at at 2.5 or this year 2.8. You know, my goal is 10 megawatts in a year. So I'm not working, I, I, not that I'm not, you know, not that I'm not happy at the number that I'm at, but I'm going to be at two, I'm going to be at 10 megawatts of solar in the next, say, three years. So that's wow. what I'm building. That's a different vision. Um, I'm going to get there. And so I'm, I'm building the team that I need and doing the things that I need to uh, get to 10 megawatts. I'm not I'm not going, wow, 2.7 is something to brag about. To me, it's not. I'm unhappy with that number. Wow. So it's just a level of satisfaction. Well, you know, I, th I, think, I think it goes with uh, the, the quote. One of my mentors has said it 
pretty much my entire career is always happy, but never satisfied. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it comes down to is once you've, once you've kind of realized that you're on another level and there's not really anybody around you now, you just have yourself, right? It's, it's, I don't know if you guys have read that book, can't hurt me by David Goggins, but he talks about once he passes everybody and he's just running by himself, that's it. Now you just have yourself to compete with. Now you just have your own ambition, your own dreams and your own goals. And, and you know, that even goes back to answer your question about the one percenters. That's what the one percenters do. They pass the entire group. They pass all the competition there ever was. And then it's just time to set their own pace and realize, okay, now I just got to beat myself. So let's, let's, let's break this back down to the, to the, to, to the average, right? So the guys that are doing alarms that are like, well, I can't even fathom what it would be like doing 400 or, you know what I mean? Like I'm still trying to like make my, my rent payment this month. Like, let's just go down to the average. That's the issue right there. Sorry. I mean, to interrupt again, but that's the issue. Like I can't, and I'm trying that's right. There is the issue. You said it. And, and I'm glad you piped in and said that because here, here's the reality. There's a lot of people sitting there watching this and they'll hear this and they'll say, this is really good stuff. And then they don't do anything about it. No. And, you know, I, 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 I want to know, like, what, what have you guys done over the last few years? Um, I guess let's go with Mitch. Oh, no, I'm going to go with Adam on this one. Adam, you, you've helped build a lot of Vivint's training, and you spent a lot of years developing people and yourself. What have you done that you found is attributed to your progression? Because you weren't always the best. You were actually the geeky skater kid that, like, wasn't good, which I think that's why this is really <laughs> Mitch can skater kid. I didn't know that kid. Wow. He's like half five in his house or something. Like he, he's he, or whatever. I don't yeah. know. He rests. So I let's. Do, I want to direct this to Adam. You weren't naturally the molded fit that was like supposed to be doing this job in comparison to what everybody thinks, right? And you've had to do intentional development to get where you're at today what what would you attribute some of the development and the progression that you spent over the years that's gone to you where you're at yeah i would sum it up like this sam if you want more do more so i i recognized that i was kind of behind in life and I, if i wanted to be a top one percenter i had to do what 99 percent of other people weren't so i remember my first year at the door to door sales rep coming home me and all my roommates had a really hard long day knocking and they'd fire up the video game and I'd fire up the training manual and I remember paying for conferences going to see whoever I could to just get inspired and get motivated and learn and progress and it's funny Sam but every year when I look at my sales teams I can tell who's going to dominate and not the guys on their phone during a meeting versus the guy that's you know taking notes like crazy the people that do more get more. I, I think this right here is a perfect example. I, I'd be interested to see a, a correlation where you run, you know, the attendees at D2D Con and the attendees on this conference call relative to the performance of their peers that chose not to make these types of investments. And I guarantee there's a correlation. The, the, the summit, it's one of the reasons I'm so excited about this summit is because those that take the time and the money to invest in themselves they're going to get the, the shortcut to success. And that, that's literally what they're doing. And that's what I had to do to go from where I was to where I am now. I had to do more to get more, more time, more money, more energy. The more I put into myself in the form of these programs and training and everything, the faster I got to the top 1%. It's so funny, but people somehow just think they can just – get hired on or, you know, they, they talk about these top reps as if like, Oh yeah, there's those people. Then there's me. Right. But it's like, guys, yeah. there's a progression that anyone could do it. I truly believe anybody could be a top rep. It's just, they have to do more. Like you said, they have to invest more. They have to say, okay, let's take this serious and actually take some action around this. Like, you know how many people have called me and been like, oh, I really want to go to the summit, but if it was like maybe two, 300 bucks, I'd go. I'm like, there's your problem. Yeah. 
dude. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you're talking one-on-one -on -one time. Like you're, you're literally one-on-one -on -one time with an expert. That's the best. That's going to not just talk about general vague sales principles. He's going to give you your full exact script, the exact one-liners, the exact nuts and bolts of how they do it. And you're going to say that you don't want to take your time three days or you don't want to take a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks or whatever to go make another 50,000, potentially a hundred thousand. Like this could literally return on investment be like massive. And you're saying, I'm going to waste my time doing something else. Sorry, Mitch. You have to go. So I was going to say, just let him. No, I was just going to piggyback with what you guys were just saying perfectly. Um, the reason why, you know, you read books is to get a sneak peek in the ultra successful. The reason why you come to the sales summit is to get a sneak peek and what the heck are these guys doing? If you're a vivid, call Adam immediately, see what the heck he's doing. If you're a caliber, if you're in alarms, call, call this man and see what the heck he's doing. Just as if you're reading a book, just as if you're watching a documentary, it's a sneak peek in the ultra successful. And that's why I think it's really cool. When I played football in college, I would literally force the best player on the team to come work out with me so I can just stare and watch what he does so I can change like that. When I play on the NFL team that I played on, I would force Kenny Stills, Jarvis Landry to come and work out with me and I would just stare at them, cop exactly what they did and make me better literally overnight. And that's typically when you can watch the best people do it, you just watch exactly how they did it. You can try all your life to do it, but you watch someone do it one time and like, that's it. I just kind of, that's just right there, I did it. And that is worth it. Like you said, Sammy, you know, 2,000, 50,000, it's, it's, what's that, that, that tagline? You can't put a price on it, right? It's, you watch the ultra successful, you will just naturally start copying them. Call this ultra successful. Force yourself to be right there next to them. Watch them. Uh, watch these video packages. Come to the summit. You do that. You with high, high performers, it is impossible not to level up or not. I love it. I love it. And I would just add, like, you know, I get this all the time, actually. I get people that literally have told me to my face when I say, hey, let me, let me teach you how to do this. Let me teach you this. I've had guys literally tell me in my face, well, that's just you, right? That's just the way you sell. That's just your personality. No, it's not. It may be my personality, but that doesn't mean that you can't mimic what I do. It doesn't mean you can't take what I do and make it your own and see the same results. And at the end of the day, like, Brian Tracy actually says it in one of the best sales books out there, The Psychology of Selling. He says, he talks about when he first started working at his sales company, he noticed that there was a guy that was literally selling three times what everybody else was in like less than half the time. And he, and he literally says, he goes, so, I, so one day I went to this guy and I said, what are you doing? What is it that you do that's better than us? Why is it that you can get so many results so much faster than any of us can. And you know what the guy says? He literally, you guys can read this. He says, give me your pitch. He, that's all. He says, give me your pitch. And the guy, and, and Brian goes, okay. And he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what you're saying, right? What you're saying wrong and what you need to change. And it's your decision whether or not you're going to change it or you're going to keep on going the same way you are. But here's the bottom line. I'm getting these results. You're getting those. Which ones do you want? Where do you want to be? And then the caption is lit. And this is literally like, I think this is what lit the fire in me when I decided to be so involved in training. I actually have it up on my whiteboard right here. Is training makes the difference. So many people think that they can just kind of float into this industry and be one of the best. And you know what? Some people actually do have the ability to be lucky and do that. But the grand majority of people are, are of reps are missing the opportunity to unlock their potential simply because they refuse to admit there's a better way. Simply because they refuse to admit that there might be something they can do that will up level them. And instead they keep on going the same route. Oh, that's just not me. Oh, that's just not my game. That's just not how I do it. It doesn't freaking matter because these are the results we're getting and those are the results you're getting. Love it. Love it. And it's like, how cool. And I want to just thank you guys to kind of wrap this up. Like for you guys being so abundant and willing to share, I think a lot of people, they get so afraid of like, Oh, I don't want to tell my secrets because it's just going to create another competitor out there on the streets. I'm like, 
Guys, there's a I big want competitors. I want somebody to be better than me. Fires me up. Like, think about it. Sharing and and creating better people out there is what makes us all better. And I appreciate you guys for being ones to step up and say, "Hey, I, how can we support this?" Um, Michael, you got something? Yeah, just in 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 thinking about uh, the D to D and what happened for me when I went there. Uh, there's a difference between, uh, like you said, of, of the people that were in my company, I was the only one that went to DDD. I was the only one that had the performance that I had the following year after going to DDD and building some things. I was a DDD. I heard one thing by one speaker, uh, and he talked about mini habits. And so I grabbed that, but it was a one thing. I've always known what I should do, but how do I get myself to do it? One of the things I'm going to share is what are the things that I do to get myself to do the things that I do every day that produce those results. And I, I can tell you, uh, everyone knows what to do. They're just not doing it. And you know why? It's because motivation doesn't work. Motivation af after a D to D, after a conference out of a thing, you come out of that just full of steam and you're full of motivation, but motivation webs, inspiration webs. How do you motivate yourself, motivate yourself after the inspiration has died down. That's priceless. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. I do certain things every single day that produce the results that I do. And then, you know, the other parts of it is the nuts and bolts. You can't talk about this from an hour and have somebody understand this. We're going to be in a room together for days and days and days. And we're going to talk about what exactly you say at the door to convert a guy that says, I'm interested. Let me talk to my wife into an appointment. All right. How do you do that? What is the words? And then you've made a presentation that's so compelling. Somebody's going, wow, almost every time I give my presentation, people look at it and they go, man, I don't understand why everybody isn't solar. They almost say that every single time. And I'm like, well, you're not solar. Uh, so, and then, and then the very next thing they say is because they just realized they lost their poker face. Oh my God, the salesman sees I'm interested. I just said, everybody should be solar. The very next thing they say is, are you going to email this presentation to me? That's their way of communicating to me that they're going to want to think about it, right? So now it's time for me to do my job. I'm a closer. How do I get the guy who just lost his poker face, showed me he's interested. Now he's freaking out. He's saying, um, are you going to email this to me? I'm going to need a few days to think about it. How, what do I say and what do I do so that 30 minutes later we're having a party? The paperwork's all done. They're signed up. They're going solar. What exactly do you do to cross that transom of I need to think about it into a closed deal? You can't do that in a half hour talk at a D to D or anywhere no, else. You, you have to sit down with people and go, what do I say? And that's what's going to happen at the D to D summit. I love it. And in each industry, which is going to be so cool. So anyway, we got to wrap this thing up. I appreciate you guys. So if you're looking or concerned or questions about the summit, message us on Facebook. We'd love to have a conversation with you guys. Um, we're here willing to support and answer any concerns or questions. This isn't a recruiting event. This isn't a, an event where it's like we're sitting here trying to pump our high horses. It's truly just to give back unlike anything that's ever happened before from a very specific content, specific performance to get you ramped up for peak season. Um, so you can go register yourself and we're going to do a coupon code that's going to last for the next five days and, or no, three days. So till the 23rd, 30% off, use I love door to door or D to D. I love D to D. The link is in the thing. Go register today. Go get your ticket. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. We've probably got another 30 seats left in the whole thing. Solar is pretty much capped out, by the way. We've got about people, ones like satellite mobility, pest control, um, and, and alarm. So it's a very exclusive conference. So make sure you don't procrastinate because it is limited seating. So go get your seat today because we are almost reached. We have almost reached our full capacity. So Sam, go get your seats now. let's get rolling. Sam, I just kind of want to say one last thing. I kind of want to like eight mile any concerns out there. So just so everybody that's watching knows, like, cause I know, I know the way that I used to think and my thought would be, oh, these guys are doing this podcast so that they can sell tickets, blah, blah, blah. Here's the deal. All of us are getting paid no matter what. It doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, the money that you spend towards this summit is going towards you. Like, and I know that sounds cliche. I know that sounds like, oh, you're just trying to sell it, but we're not. Like, at the end of the day, we're doing this because we're passionate about it. We want to share what we do. We want to see other people level up. We want to see people get to our level because at the end of the day, that's the selfish desire for us. If you want to know the truth, the selfish desire for me personally is to be able to say that I got 
20 guys in the satellite industry to sell 200 or 300 more accounts than they would have before. That's my, that's my like selfish desire. It's not a money desire. The money that you spend is going towards you. So you ask yourself, I don't even know how much it is right now, but you ask yourself if a grand or two grand or whatever it is, is worth you seeing an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 at the end of the summer. And if you say no, then yeah, don't come. I, don't, I mean, I don't even want you to be there if that's your mindset. Those are the guys that honestly will never get anywhere, to be honest. No, like it's, it's that's not hunger. It's not hunger. So anyway, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. It's just like, it's what Adam said. It's just, they're not the committed. They're not the ones that are ready to, ready to pop. And in their time will come, hopefully. But at the end of the day, we're here to support those that are hungry and give them the right tools and training so that they can go, they can go thrive on that hunger. Right. So, Hey, we want to wrap this up. You guys are so awesome. We love you. And I'm super excited to jam. We've been crafting some really cool things and uh, yeah, share this and like this. If you know people that need to be there, let us know and let's get them, let's get them all registered. Let's go. Okay. We'll see you guys. Thanks guys. See you soon. See you in Vegas. Later. See you soon.